And I do that because uh, I post these things to YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching on YouTube. You can catch all of the action live at uh, twitch.tv slash Leo Dickinson VT. That'll be in the description down below. You are watching this. Trando, thank you so much for your subscription. Two months. I do appreciate that a lot. Anyway, speaking of subscribing, if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to this channel and to my other three channels or two channels, Leo Dickinson Long Plays and uh, Leo Dickinson VT. You are watching this on Leo Dickinson Sumo because I decided to cut up all of my YouTube content into three channels so the algorithm can catch my channel better. Hello, Josh. How are you doing? You're just in time. We're going to start covering Kolto Nawaka, Mr. Quad Boob himself, the grandson of Kolto Zakura Yokozuna. I think he's the 54th Yokozuna, son of the Sekiwake by the same name, Kolto Nawaka. He had a pretty good tournament. He went 11 and 4, and all of his losses were, uh, I mean,. I'm not going to say unexpected because he's fighting, you know, around his rank. He's Maegashita 14. He lost to Yutakiyama, who struggled. Yorikiri. We'll get there when we get there. He lost to Kaisei, who uh, bailed out 5, 7, and 3. Uh, he lost to Ishiura, who actually finished 11 and 4, but Ishiura didn't get a special prize. And then he lost on the final day to Abi, who ended 12 and 3, and... He found himself in a position where he could have been a surprise Jun Yusho, you know, but uh, that last day he lost to Abi, who has been rampaging through these ranks, and we already talked about what we think of Abi. He might move up to Sekiwake. I think he might not because the Sumo Association might want to stop a potential Ozeki push for him because he does have two like 12 win tournaments back to back, which is really strong, even though they're probably not going to count that. Maegashita 17 one, but that was something we already covered in my previous uh, stream that I did not post to YouTube, which I might post to YouTube in uh, the Banzuke guessing game. Uh, if you're on Twitch, you could still catch that VOD from last week, but uh, here we're going to be talking about Colton Owaka, and we said that he is probably going to be flying up these ranks because of this 11 and four and because a lot of guys ab above him lost. So... He has really nowhere to go but up, and he might find himself back in the Makuchi Joy, which, uh, if I do remember correctly, he was there, and yes, he was. He was back there in uh, September of 2021. He went 3, 7, and 5, so he bailed out due to injury to a leg, I'm pretty sure. And at that tournament, we can catch who his three wins were against. That was Daisho, Chiyo Shoma, and Shodai. So... Already kind of looking favorable, considering one of his losses was to uh, Mitake Yumi, Takakesho, the other two Ozeki, Meisei, who struggled at the last tournament, Tedder no Fuji. So it's one of those things where uh, he's losing to the guys he should be losing to. He stole a win off of Shodai, and he beat the guys that traditionally he could beat. So we'll talk about that after the Banzuke comes out. And I think I'm delaying too long right now. We need to be talking about Kolton Awaka at the... Hatsubasho, and breaking down how he got his 11 wins in the first place. Day one was against Chiyomaru, and that would be his fourth win against Chiyomaru, and the winning technique would be a Hikiyotoshi, which I do not have a brand new wipe for. I did just show this off earlier, but uh, I'll show it off again for the YouTube VOD. I have these new wipes that I'll be uh, debuting at the next tournament really cool i think it uh helps make the stream a little bit more immersive anyway let's get into the match the first match against chio maru kotonawaka here on the right we'll watch it at full speed and then we will pause it break it down and see how it goes from there Kotonawaka gets down and ready first. He gets pushed and pulled down to the side, but he recovers, stands up, and slaps Chiyomaru down. So, from here, I can already tell you that it was just a good defensive recovery after that initial pull attempt from Chiyomaru. Chiyomaru usually doesn't go for the pull, which is why this uh, is kind of unusual. So, already off the bat, we have uh, unusual 
Tachi Ai from the man on the left. He does go straight for the throat, and we can see Colton Awaka catches him with this uh, left hand underneath the elbow. And traditionally, when uh, you're going up against an Oshizumo guy, you want to be able to slap the hands up and away. So we have Colton Awaka up under here, hand to the rib cage. The other one, kind of can't see, but uh, for now, we see that Colton Awaka has the good push, and the hand is coming up into the armpit to try to pull, push those arms up and away, but Chiyomaru, seeing that, pulls the hands down, and we can see Colton Awaka really gets caught off guard by that. He kind of trips forward, but then he plants this left foot. He takes the step, plants the left foot, and he's going to pivot on it. He pivots on that, and he... Still not in a very good position, by the way. He pivots on it. He still has his left shoulder facing Chiyomaru. Prime for the attack of Chiyomaru. But then he manages to catch a slipping Chiyomaru. So it looks more like Chiyomaru slips here. Because we can see his feet leaving the ground. His toes really far back. Leg really far extended. Chiyomaru slips here. And... Colton Waka just kind of catches him. You can see he's like right on his tippy toes. Like this is not much leverage right here. He's not getting a really good push. He is just slipping. And so Colton Waka just lets him fall. I'll give him credit where credit is due. That was a really good recovery. After the initial charge, he nearly got pulled down and slapped to the side. But planting that left foot, pivoting, and then catching Chiyomaru right here. Really good defensive maneuver, but if Chiyomaru had kept his footing, this would have been a much different match, and that might have been a loss for Colton Owaka. Not a terribly impressive win, but a win is a win, and Colton Owaka is going to get his first win via Hiki Otoshi. Alright, this day two, his match is against Chio Taidu, another guy from the same stable. Uh, let's see... I have to look through the Torikumi to see where his match even is. And that's the struggle with uh, coming through some of these lower, these guys lower on the Banzuke. That's Chiyomaru again. It's uh, really annoying to figure out when they fight because, you know, when I cover Teterno Fuji, he's always the last match of the day. But uh, let's see, we have Kotonowaka versus Chio Taidu after this match. And we're not going to watch it because nobody cares about you, Takayama. As my brother would say, it's very hard being a Takayama fan. Here we have Chiyomaru handing Colton Awaka the power water. There might be some uh, deep, mysterious bond between these two. <laughs> if you're a certain YouTuber in the sumo space. Does Arden like the face bush? Oh yeah, she loves the facial hair. I kind of don't like the mustache, but when I have my hair down like this, I think it looks really good. Like, I look kind of suave. Suavamente, besame. I need the Ganondorf dancing to that as a sound alert. <laughs> Alright. Anyway. Colton Owaka versus Chio Taidu. Chio Taidu. He struggled at this tournament as well. Let's see if it's another fluke win for Colton Awaka or if he actually fights with some spirit here. Oh, false start. He has a false start. A little spirited. Catches Chio Taidu with those forearms down. Now he's going for the face, and Chio Taidu attempts a throw, but Colton Awaka recovers and gets the slap down while he falls on his ass. What's up? I guess disrespectful. I don't want to be disrespectful, but it's so funny when you. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> Every time they fall and roll off the dohyo, Do it looks funny. It's so funny. <laughs> I don't think that's disrespectful. I try, I try not to giggle, but I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, someone made a gif of uh, at uh, two tournaments ago when Tedder no Fuji threw uh Takakesho and he rolled into the Gyoji and took him out. Someone put the Wii Bowling strike. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, so let's see uh, again what happens with Colton Awaka here. He gets the good push. He definitely does get the good push here. 
feel bad about laughing at something like this. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, but we can see, like, immediately off the Tachi, I, it's kind of even. But uh, I think Colton Iwaka, he gets pushed back. Chio Taidu has better leverage, it seems here. But Colton Iwaka sliding back. You can see he has much longer legs than his opponent, too, which should give him a little bit more leverage. And he does kind of use that to his advantage when uh, Chio Taidu moves into his Oshidashi. Or Oshidashi. Well, his Oshizumo attack, creating some space. That only benefits Colton Iwaka because he has longer limbs and can just attack back at a higher range. So Chio Taidu pushing Colton Iwaka away by the neck actually works in Colton Iwaka's favor because now Colton Iwaka, you see this right hand, it's charged up, it's going. It's going to go right into his face and that's boom, right into the chest. Colton Iwaka, now he's on the offensive and we can see the separation. We can see Koton Owaka, his hand to the face. Chio Taidu's arm can't make that distance. Now, Koton Owaka has a really good stance. He's got that left foot forward. Nice, planted into the ground. He's got his right foot back. Not straight, though. I drew it straight, but it's uh, back, so he's generating some leverage right there. And it looks like I drew a friggin' like, goat leg. What joint is that? And now he's getting some good leverage off of this frontal assault. He's leaning forward. He's got the good footing. Chio Taidu doesn't have the good footing. You can see his feet are uh, like in a line next to each other. That's only going to cause him to go backwards even after he secures better footing. But Colton Owaka is still standing stalwart. Feet haven't moved. What's up, Hellhound? How are you doing? And now Chio Taidu, a little bit on the retreat. Colton Owaka takes his arms and pushes up and under. So he's pushing with both of those arms straight to the chest to pop up Chio Taidu, which doesn't work as well as he thinks because Chio Taidu grabs him by the outside left and goes for the throw here. Koto Nawaka hops forward, loses his footing, loses all of the power generated in those feet. So this is actually not a very good move from uh, Koto Nawaka because he does almost lose here. We can see... Chio Taidu takes a very good step to the side. He has a lot of good power coming into the throw. He has, you know, the hand on the belt going to try to flip him up. But Colton Iwaka puts this leg down, plants it, and now he's going to use that to pivot like he did in the last match. He's going to try to, uh, oh, sorry. He's going to try to bring, sorry. He plants his other foot in the back, and the throw from Chio Taidu actually fails here. So, let, oh. I wanted to go back like only two seconds, but it goes back like ten seconds. Thank you for the lurk action production. But again, we can see, uh, you know, he plants this right foot, and Chio Taidu gets behind him. So then he has to swing it back, and he has to move this uh back foot forward. So and then he has a better pivot foot. So he'll move this foot forward, move this foot back. And that way he can square his body against the assault of Chio Taidu. Welcome, VV9 fingers. Back initially, but it's a little slow on that recovery, too. And if uh, I think if Chio Taidu was a little quicker on his attack, he simply just gets underneath the armpit of Colton Owaka here and tackles him to the ground, more or less. But uh, Colton Owaka manages to recover. He gets that foot back behind him. And that's really what saves him, because if he doesn't get that foot behind him, like this back foot right here, if that's over here instead, he has his other foot in the same line, and he just gets tipped right over onto his back. But because he puts his back foot back here, that generates some pressure that now he's not moving back as hard, and that's why he tumbles off the dohyo the way he does. Because now, instead of trying to just tip him over... It's an entire thing that needs to be pushed over. What's up, Mergle? Death black metal dress up. I mean, I am wearing black. And I got my hair down. <laughs> yeah, we could see right here. Chio Taidu going for the push, charging headlong. If Colton Owaka's footing is worse, Colton Owaka just falls flat on his back. But because his footing went far back enough to generate a little bit of stability for himself, he manages to get the slap down before he tumbles backwards. 
And this was good, quick thinking from Colton Owaka, but again, early on in the match, there's a little bit of sloppiness that leads to a decent recovery that I think a better sumo wrestler would have taken advantage of. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier when uh, we were talking about how he does against the guys at the top, the Sanyaku. A better sumo wrestler will take advantage of this. A better sumo wrestler will win right here, or they will, instead of trying to go for the throw, lose the grip, they'll pull him in, hug him around the side, and then, you know, escort him out of the ring. But because this is a Chiyo Taidu and it's not Tenno Fuji, Chiyo Taidu goes for a charge forward, allows Kota Nawaka enough time to reset his footing, and that is just enough time to be able to get the win. Like a matter of seconds right there. So I'll say this, Kota Nawaka is 2-0 right now, but it's not an incredibly impressive 2-0. The first one was a Chiyo Taidu slip, I mean, uh, a Chiyomaru slip. This one, Chiyotairu not being fast enough to secure the win, I think. I think that's mostly it. It was, uh, he wasn't fast enough to secure the win. So now we're going to move into day three where Kota Nawaka finally does get punished. He gets his first loss against Yutakeyama early on in the evening in the fourth match of the night. This is Oho versus Tsurugisho. Oh, in the fifth match of the night. I have to wait for uh, Aoyama. And here we go. So here we have uh, usual pusher thruster Yutakeyama going up against Kota Nawaka, who is also kind of a pusher thruster himself. When is this from? This is the previous tournament. This is uh, the Harubasho, just back in January. And recovering the gap of sumo content with some sumo breakdowns. Kota Waka versus Yu Takayama on day three of the Hatsubasho. Kota Waka catches Yu Takayama, but Yu Takayama creates the space. Realizes he can't win the Oshi match, so stays chest to chest. Kotonawaka with the inside left. Not sure if he has the outside right, but uh, Yutakiyama is trying to fight for that outside right. I would say Kotonawaka has the better position here. And now I have to wonder how he loses from here. Goes for the push, Yutakiyama responds in kind. They're stalemated in the middle of the ring. Yutakiyama trying to find an in with that right arm. And I don't want to try skipping ahead because I'll just skip ahead to the loss. Yutakiyama actually goes for the push here. Kotonawaka tries to throw him to the side, but he can't keep his right hand outside on the belt, whereas Yutakiyama locks in the right hand outside and he gets the Yorikiri. So early on in this match, like I described, Yutakiyama realizes he's not going to win the Oshi match. So he resorts to the Yotsu, which uh, I haven't, I don't think I've seen Kotonawaka in the Yotsu as much. But uh, Yutakiyama realizing, you can see it here again. He tries to get the push and he tries to go for Oshizumo. <laughs> And Kotonawaka is not responding to these thrusts. Like, Kotonawaka is just trying to push forward and stay underneath these armpits to try to push Yutakiyama out. So Yutakiyama says, okay, if you want to stay here, then I will oblige. If you want to go for the grip game, I will happily oblige. And so they get locked into this position where, uh, let me see again if Kotonawaka has the right hand grip. Uh, no, he does not. Kotonawaka doesn't have the right hand outside. Yutakiyama doesn't have the right hand outside. Just started watching this year and you're trying to absorb as much as you can. Well, this is a great stream to absorb some stuff while we really break down the nitty gritty of the sumo matches. Of course, I'm doing this from uh, an amateur's point of view, but I feel like I've watched enough sumo where I probably can reliably, reliably break down the matches as they happen. But like I said, Kota Nawaka does not have the outside right on the belt. Neither does uh, Yutakiyama, though, so then they get stalemated here, and they do, you know, push chest to chest a little bit. And uh, this is a position where you would think 
the uh, person with the longer legs might have a better chance at getting a good push. But we can see Yutakiyama's chest and head are actually a little bit lower, which means he has a little bit more leverage on the body. Like, they're not matched, like, head-to-head -head on each other's shoulders. Yutakiyama's, like, slightly lower, so he has pushing power. He can actually push back up and against Colton Owaka. So, from here... Whenever one of them tries to push, like right here, they're fighting each other, and that gives you Takayama the outside right, which now he has double grip on the belt. Now, this is very dangerous for Colton Owaka because it's very hard to break that grip unless he can, you know, either wiggle his hips out of it or, you know, try to just lose the grip on the inside left. To break the outside right, which that's definitely not a trade you want. So you can see Yutakiyama nearly gets thrown because uh, Kotonowaka has this outside right up above the armpit, likely trying to break the grip of the inside left from Yutakiyama. But uh, this throw attempt does not work because Yutakiyama plants that right foot, slams the left one down, and now they are, uh, you know. Again, chest to chest, but Yutakiyama is a little bit lower. You can even see it in the shoulders. Yutakiyama has his shoulder kind of up in the armpit so he can generate more pushing pressure. His head is lower than Colton Owaka's head so he can generate more pressure. And Colton Owaka, this is a position where his larger frame, his longer legs, betrays him because he can't, he's not creating distance. He's not doing Oshizumo. He's not keeping his opponent away from him. And uh, he doesn't have the strength like Tochi Noshin to just be able to lift his opponent up. So his overwhelming size does him no favors here. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the how Hokuseho is just so large. that He'll reach over your back, grab your belt, and then just pick you up and out of the ring. Kotonowaka is not, oh, sorry. Kotonowaka is not large enough to do that. He's large enough and long enough to have good Oshizumo, but if you get inside, you can use his size against him, and that's exactly what's happening here. Then we'll move into a Yutakiyama pushing up into the chest. Colton Owaka can't do anything because that outside right is doing nothing. He has no grip on anything. Inside left is really just maintaining balance, and Yutakiyama has him at the edge. He stood perfectly straight up. It's only a matter of time until Colton Owaka takes the loss. And this kind of does expose Colton Owaka a little bit. He, I mean, he's young. He definitely has his weaknesses. And like I said, these uh, his first two wins were not incredibly impressive. So now it's kind of one of those things where you would expect him to normalize. He's probably going to go eight and seven. Okay, he has his first loss. He might take a second or a third loss in these next few days. And, uh, well... Strangely enough, that's not what happens. He wins on day four against Wakamoto Haru, and we will see how that goes down. He is the fourth match after Kaisei and Tochi Noshin. Ichi Yamamoto, we've gone too far. Here comes Colton Awaka. This is not his first match against Wakamoto Haru. He is... Three and one in the head to head after today. Oh, yeah, this was the night where I was really sick, so I had a bunch of guest speakers. <laughs> All right. Another false start from Colton Awaka. That's already two this tournament. Oh. So let's see how Colton Awaka does it this time. Otonawaka catches Wakamoto Haru, actually has a grip with the outside right this time, has Wakamoto Haru at the edge, and gets the frontal crush out, the Yori Taoshi. <laughs> I had to test that out. Gets the Yori Taoshi in that match. And we can watch at full speed again. Because I think it's just as simple as Kotonowaka 
catches Wakamoto Haru, and because he actually has a grip on the outside right, is Yotsuzumo is superior. Whereas uh, against Yutakiyama, he didn't have any leverage and he didn't have that grip on the outside. So we can break it down really slowly, see how it happens here. Wakamoto Haru comes out like a bullet. Look at this. He has this outside left already prepped to grab. So Kotonowaka, arm low, inside. Gonna grab this belt as well. But uh, like already, he's leaping into the air. He's generating as much force as he can into a strong push against the tall frame of Kotonowaka. But Kotonowaka, knee bent back, knee bent stood firmly in the ground. He's catching this. He catches the Tachi eye. Wakamoto Haru generates no forward momentum. And then Wakamoto Haru switches his grip inside left. Wakamoto Haru also, after that charge, he's popped up. So now in the last match where uh, Yutakiyama had his chest or lower, now we see Kotono Waka had his face like lower on the chest near the collarbone of Wakamoto Haru. That throws Wakamoto Haru off balance. He's only on one foot back here. This other foot's in the air. So he has no leverage to speak of, and that allows Kotonowaka to stay on the aggressive push. And you can see, even though he gives up the inside left, that push allows him to get the inside right. And because now he's uh, he is in uh, that unfavorable position I spoke of earlier where now Wakamoto Haru is lower on him and can generate pressure but now that he actually has the grip on the belt this is better for him because now he can use his larger frame his larger shoulders to move his opponent the way he wants similar to Tochi Noshin and it also helps that Wakamoto Haru is much smaller than Yutakiyama so when he has this grip on the belt all he needs to do with these shoulders like raise the shoulder and this belt, wee goes up with it. And that's exactly what's going to happen. He hops forward, gets low, and then pulls up. Like, we can see Wakamoto Haru is standing, legs straight. Colton Awaka, this leg is really bent because he is getting low, and he's trying to pop up, like, use his belly to pop him up in the air. His leg back, low, bent, uh, not bent enough for my liking, but uh, he's generating enough pressure that he gets lower. You can see his shoulders are lower, his head is slightly lower, and that generates the pressure he needs to really put Wakamoto Haru on the edge. And then at the edge, it's just a matter of time, because we can see tippy toes, and this is where my brother is like, man, why doesn't he just walk out backwards? He's already lost. But, uh, you know, we've seen last second wins at the edge, you know, kind of dangerous because you're falling out backwards. But, uh, like, really, at this point, it's lost. Sure, he could have won here with the throw, but uh, Colton Owaka, really strong inside left grip because he's got all of those layers of belt underneath his hand. Outside right, not as strong because he only has the outside layer of belt. But, again, at this point... It has to be luck that gets you the win if you're Wakamoto Haru, and he simply does not have it. Frontal crush out for Colton Owaka. He corrected his mistakes that he had against uh, Yutakiyama, and like uh, like is normally said, most of the mat the sumo match is in the Tachi eye, and Colton Owaka completely stopping the Wakamoto Haru charge. Like we can see Wakamoto Haru, he comes out really powerfully, but Kotonowaka simply catches him. And then I think what also contributes to Wakamoto Haru losing power is the fact that he stops to change the pressure. Because when he's pushing like this on the outside left, like that's not bad. But he stop he pulls it back and then tries to go inside left and Pulling back that pressure allows Kotonowaka to walk it forward because now he's not getting pushed back on that right side. So, big mistake from Wakamoto Haru there. Very good of Kotonowaka to really take advantage of it as best as he can. Getting really low, you know, lifting with your uh, back, taking your legs completely out of the equation. <laughs> 
just with take you, man. The, just but, take that. I mean, that's that was a really good power lift by uh, Kontonawaka there to get him up on the Tawada in the first place. But now at this point, he is 3-1. and one. Still looking, you know, not the best, but uh, he's looking pretty good. As we move into day five, his uh, opponent here is Kaisei, who is fresh off of a win against Tochinoshin. And that is the fourth match of the evening again. This is Koto Eiko. Okay, Koto Nawaka is the next match. Yeah, no problem, Vivi. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. And for those of you watching on YouTube, if you like the content, you can like, subscribe, subscribe to all of my other YouTube channels, and uh, have a good time here as we discuss more sumo. I have another video coming out on Tuesday that will be uh, the top 10 matches of the Harubasho. And that is something you can only find on my sumo channel. So look forward to that. All right, so next up we have... Oops. We have uh, Kaisei, who is a specialist when it comes to the Yotsuzuma, going up against uh, Kotonowaka, who does have a more balanced style. I think I prefer his Oshizuma more. But uh, now Kaisei is really someone that you don't really want to get into a belt match with, because I think Kaisei, he is the tallest man in the top division. Last, uh, last I remember, he's like six foot four. This man is tall he doesn't look it like you're kind of distracted by all the uh the glistening shoulder and back hair but kaisei is massive so he has the advantage when it comes to you know wingspan leg length and uh the things that usually favor colton Awaka in the head-to-head -head matchup now are not in his favor so how does he respond to the specialist kaisei I, oh, we're supposed to watch his full speed. My bad. But Kaisei gets caught a little bit, gets turned around, but Kai, but uh, he stands stalwart. Look at those positioning on his legs, too. Really not letting Colton Awaka get the better push. And even though Colton Awaka is lower, Kaisei is used to this. He has a really strong outside left grip, and Colton Awaka is doing a lot of moving and shaking, but it's not enough. He doesn't have the strength to move this beast of a Brazilian. He is getting low, trying to generate that leverage that he needs. But Kaisei is matching him, and then he loses the grip and gets Yori Kirid. So that's a big mistake right there, losing the grip in the first place. But uh, we can get to the point where he loses that grip and see how it happens. So right off the Tachi Eye, we can see it's kind of back and forth here. Kaisei gets the outside left. Colton Awaka gets that inside right, and I think it's uh, unusual how he has like that right arm straight. I've noticed that in almost every match now. He goes right arm straight as if he's trying to grab the belt. And I mean, against a dude who wants to Yotsuzumo, you're going to grab his belt. So he's going for the inside right here, not doing the usual play against Oshizumo guys, where he's going to then bring up the arm and try to break, you know, whatever that outside left is doing, but this is exactly what Kaisei wants too. Kaisei can't initially grab the outside left, but I have to imagine he gets the inside right while Colton Owaka fights with that inside right underneath the armpit. And from here, Colton Owaka has two options. He can either keep his arm up here and make Kaisei's left arm completely out of the equation. Like it'll be up here it won't be long enough to grab his belt if he's lucky. And that's because Colton Owaka will generate too much uh, interference up in this armpit. So Kaisei won't be able to lower that arm in the way he wants to. Or his other option is to lower the hand down to the belt and try to establish dominance over the belt using the inside right while giving Kaisei that outside left that he definitely does want because he's a Yotsu specialist. So how he reacts initially right here is going to you know, set the tone for the rest of the match. And what he does try to do is keep that right arm up. 
but he's kind of uh I think he's overextending himself here because we can see he has a really good grip on the outside left. Kaise is maintaining with the inside right, and he's making sure he's not moving back as much as he might want to. Kaise has really good footing. This left leg back, stopping the push. The right leg forward, you know, just to generate more stability. But this is where Kaise actually is not in a very good position because Colton Awaka could if he wanted to, really try to get the back of the belt here. If Colton Owaka moved his hand from here to here, he could grab the back of the belt, and that would give him what's generally a death grip. If you get the back of the belt, if you grab that knot, you can exert like full control over the hips and over the legs because you control this part of the belt that comes between the butt cheeks and really just be able to control the legs of your opponent. Unfortunately for Colton Owaka, he doesn't get that grip. He keeps his hand on that left side of the belt, and this is where he lowers his right hand to the belt. So now he has the grip on both parts of the belt. He gives up his grip inside right to Kaise, and this is where now we just see chest to chest trying to push. And he does have the leverage. He has good leverage underneath Kaise, but Kaise just stops him at every turn because he is also exerting control over those hips that digs in deeper on that left hand. And this is actually something I will go back and uh, we do have to see. We can see right here, Kaise, his grip on the belt is only on these outer layers. So he doesn't have the best grip on the belt that can help him exert the full control but when Kaise let I mean when uh, Colton Owaka lets up on his attack he inches his fingers forward and he gets the full grip on all of the layers of the belt and uh this is something that we've seen on other sumo wrestlers for example Tochi Noshin you'll see the belt go up to his nipples because the that outer layer is very loose and that's meant to help you win that Yotsu match, because if your opponent only has the grip on the outer layer of the belt, he can't exert that much control over you because that belt is that part of the belt is loose and it's not going to influence your movement as much as getting this deep grip does. Because what this deep grip does is he has the entirety of the belt in his hand. There is no loose layer because if that inner layer was loose, it would be falling off and you would lose for exposing yourself. <laughs> so now Kaisei has this completely dug in. Colton Owaka does not because we can see that uh, he doesn't have his hands on that inner layer of the belt. But it's still good because it's very close to the knot of the belt, which, like I was explaining before, helps you exert more control over your opponent's legs. So it's not that Colton Owaka's grip is bad, but it could be better. And he does keep trying to generate power against Kaise, but Kaise, this is his bread and butter. He likes doing this. He just counters, he parries, and even though Colton Owaka does get a good push, Kaise is able to maintain and stabilize in the ring. He has that left foot back, not letting Colton Owaka get the push. Colton Owaka is matching with his right foot back. And Colton Owaka is always the one on the initial push. So we can see here, Colton Owaka is actually wanting to initiate this push. And this is where he's going to lose his grip on the belt as well. Colton Owaka tries to push, but then Kaisei responds by pushing himself. And when that happens, we can see Kaisei, his elbow is going to be digging into the forearm of Colton Owaka right here. And that makes him lose the grip on this outside part of the belt. And that's exactly what Kaisei does as well. He leans back, really digs that forearm or that elbow into the forearm, breaks the grip, moves forward, and now that the grip is broken, he has full control. Kaisei simply has full control here. Kotonawaka does still have that inside right on the belt, but unless he can get his own uh, left hand inside, like if he can switch the grip and get this hand quickly inside, then that would help him out immensely because now Kaise would have double outside, which he is not very good at. But he can't get that because Kaise is gripping him really tightly. He's got that right arm locked around him like a bear hug. 
And uh, even though he does kind of lose it because Koltanawaka takes a step back, attempts the throw, that's not going to work because Kaisei is barreling forward. And we can even see Kaisei changes his trajectory on that move forward because uh, I'll pause it in just a second when we get to that point. But uh, Kaisei, he starts moving this way, but then when Colton Owaka attempts the throw, he starts moving towards the one leg that he would throw with. So we'll see this in a uh, quick time right here. Kaisei moving to the right now when uh, Colton Owaka takes a step back and we can see his feet starting to pivot so he can move his hips to go for the throw. Kaisei knows what's happening and he just starts moving through him and we can see Kaisei planting his foot. This foot in the air is going to start moving this way and it's murder she wrote because Kaisei simply kills the man, pushes him right out of the ring, belly to belly. And Colton Owaka, you can't say there was no effort there. Colton Owaka put in a lot of effort, but uh, didn't get the best grip. Gave up that uh, outside left to Kaisei, which just helped him exert more control. He never got the best possible grip he could have on the belt. And uh, Colton Owaka simply has to work on his Yotsu game, especially against someone that loves the Yotsu. Mm. He's got to work on that. And like I said, there was definitely not a lack of effort. Colton Owaka had some good pushes. He had some good leverage. But Kaisei, just using this weight, using his larger frame, using his larger weight to really counter all of those pushes, Colton Owaka never tried to get to the side to try to, and that's how we see Kaisei lose a lot. Kaisei does not have speed, and Colton Owaka did not try to abuse that in any way. Because a lot of the ways Kaisei loses is someone gets to his side and then just kind of hugs him around the waist while, you know, like digging their shoulder up into the armpit and, you know, just pushing him out of the ring like that. Colton Owaka tried to fight him chest to chest. Which, uh, I mean, Tochinoshin just lost to Kaisei that exact same way the day before. Why are you trying to fight this man chest to chest when everybody beats him by getting to his side because he is slow and bumbling? So, bad game plan from the start for Col from Colton Owaka. I'll give him that, you know, that's fighting spirit right there. He tried to match Kaisei with that frontal assault. And unfortunately for him, it failed. And that is the danger you put yourself in when you try to do Yotsu Zumo against a Yotsu specialist. So next we move into day six. And uh, we're taking a long time with these. Usually I blow through these in like an hour and a half. But uh, these uh, matches are going a little bit long. Colton Owaka is kind of exciting. <laughs> we're already an hour in. Uh, Colton Owaka versus Ichi Yamamoto in the fourth match of the day. The top of the division, but uh, we can take a look. Uh, let's see. We got a cheeky little slap in. He's uh, Oho versus Toshinoshin, and then we have Colton Owaka. Colton Owaka versus Ichi Yamamoto. Ichi Yamamoto started off, you know, three and two, but then kind of went down like a burning shooting star going five and ten. So uh, this is really where both tournaments are made for this guy. These guys, Colton Owaka, three and two gets the win, ends with eleven wins. Ichi Yamamoto gets the loss, ends with ten losses. Although that's a, a very deep storyline that probably doesn't exist and only will in fan fiction. Because in reality, this is just yet another match inside of the dojo for these two gentlemen. And uh, Colton Owaka. Let's see what he does against Oshi Specialist Ichi Yamamoto. Ichi Yamamoto goes straight for the face. Colton Owaka withstanding the attack. Ichi Yamamoto just could not mount the attack. Colton Owaka just standing like a brick wall. And Ichi Yamamoto could never push him back. And uh, we get kind of a weird angle from the cameraman at Abema here. But uh, for the most part, we can kind of see... Like, just as I was describing, Colton Owaka, legs back, knees bent, just withstanding the assault. And Ichi Yamamoto, 
just not able to get a good push. You see, uh, Colton Owaka has his hand up underneath the armpit, really neutralizing the attack from Ichi Yamamoto, because when Ichi Yamamoto tries to do anything with his arm, now it's under the control of Colton Owaka. He goes for the outside with it, like trying to put his head into Colton Owaka's chest. That's where Colton Owaka wants him, because he knows that Ichi Yamamoto mostly does that Oshizumo. It's not going to work out. Colton Owaka slaps him in the face, takes a step back, and then we can already see this right hand is meant to parry this inside left attack. And Ichi Yamamoto is not going for the face, he's going for the chest, he's going for those quad boobies. But uh, Colton Owaka knows it's coming, and he already has that forearm and elbow ready to parry, which he does right here. And then when Ichi Yamamoto tries to get inside again, Colton Owaka just... This right leg, back, stable, firm, in the ground, really just building up solid position here. Ichi Yamamoto can't push him back at all. And then Kotonawaka stepping forward, he has control now. He's getting both hands up to the chest of Ichi Yamamoto. He takes that step forward with the right foot, and now he's on the attack. He really scurries forward after that. And, uh, I mean, from there, it's just frontal push out. Oshidashi. Well, that was a Oshitaoshi. Frontal push out. Frontal crushing push out. Because the Taoshi implies that they fall down out of the ring. Like a Yori Taoshi is they get crushed down out of the ring. Oshitaoshi, I have to assume, is they fall outside of the ring after a frontal push. But yeah, just. Really great defense from Colton Owaka the entire way, and then when he sees his opportunity to attack, he does it. Great forearm to the neck, great form in general. This is probably Colton Owaka's best match so far, even though it's against one of the worst performers of the tournament, which, uh, you know, not sure what that says about Colton Owaka just yet. He is 4-2 and two coming into day 7. Day 7 is where he... Oh, this is the second half of the night. Day 7 is where he will be fighting against Oho. He gets the win against the debutante. Let's see, that's Wakamoto Haru. Yutaki Yama, we went a little too far. Kotonawaka versus Oho. Oho Sumo is... 100% like culturally Japanese. Both men four and two. Kotonawaka breaking more hearts. Getting a good push inside, actually stepping forward and then twisting that right hip back so he can get the slap down against the inexperienced Oho. So like I was explaining in the commentary that night, this is really a match of, uh, of dynasties here. Oho. Grandson to Taiho, former Yokozuna. Colton Owaka, grandson of Koto Zakura, former Yokozuna. Japanese. I don't think it belongs in the Who's the cooler grandson? Well, it turns out it's Colton Owaka, because we can see. And this is uh, kind of different from Colton Owaka's usual initial approach. He puts the forearm out in front instead of lowering it down to try to catch the belt. He puts the forearm up high into the chest of Oho to stop Oho's attack. And we can see Oho is kind of being stood up a little bit. Colton Owaka is 100% trying to push forward. Look at the angles on his legs pointing forward, which usually he has the Oho stance where he's catching the Tachi eye. But this time, Colton Owaka wants to be the one to charge forward and pop up his opponent. That's uh, kind of what happens here where Oho... Tries to do something with his outside left, getting up underneath the armpit, but this only helps Kotonawaka get that forearm up higher. He gets the elbow to the jawbone right here. And uh, this might look good for Oho if he's actually able to turn Kotonawaka to the side. Like, if he can move Kotonawaka to the side with that arm and then attack Kotonawaka's hip, then that might be good for... Oho, and thank you so much for your prime scrubscription, Princess Arden. I love you. <laughs> but uh, that's not what happens for Oho here. Golden Waka brings that right foot back, and that's a very small detail that helps him out a lot. Because if he kept that right foot forward, Oho can attack that hip, 
get to the side and put Colton Owaka off balance. But Colton Owaka, his foot was here, brings it back, squares his hips, squares his shoulders. So now Ojo doesn't get that opportunity. Very smart, very subtle move from Colton Owaka. And then from here, does give up the inside left grip. But uh, this is where, again, Colton Owaka is going to take a step back and use Ojo's push to his own advantage because he's going to... Oh, sorry for that artifacting there. But you can see he takes the step to the side and, again, pulls that right hip back, pulls the right foot back, pulls his entire right side back, and then goes for the slap down and earns the win as simply as that. So, uh... Mostly just pivoting on that left foot the entire time. Ojo didn't know how to keep up with the attack. And personally, I do want to say that this win is taking advantage of Ojo's inexperience. Which, again, when he goes and fights the Sanyaku, he's not going to be able to do that. He's not going to be able to take advantage of someone's inexperience at the very top of the ladder. Because he himself is going to be the inexperienced one. So, overall, I would say this is a more standard match from Colton Owaka. Like, this is as expected for Colton Owaka. And it's very simple. Attacking with that right, and then pivoting on the left the entire way. And getting the step back. Getting the fadeaway shot. Getting that uh, slap down. So... Solid win for Colton Owaka right there. Moving into day eight. Let's see. Who does he fight on day eight? Colton Owaka fights against Aoyama. That is in the second match of the day. First one was Koto Shoho versus Tsurugi Show. And we have Colton Owaka versus Aoyama. Real question is, does the quad boom? So, again, we have a very known specialist in the Oshizumo Aoyama who is kind of known to flip his style a little bit, going for a headlong charge instead of that usual slap slap that he does to the chest. But let's see how Colton Owaka responds to it. And welcome, Kui. I hope you are nice and cozy. I was playing mm. Animal Crow. So. So Colton Owaka catches uh, Aoyama there and then gets hands straight to the throat using those long arms to try to generate power, which he does. Has Aoyama reeling the entire time with this really calculated attack. Going head to head, getting lower. Aoyama going for a leg trip. And, you know, at full speed, again, I want to say that was more of taking advantage of an opponent's mistake than it was purely being dominant himself. And, you know, that's not to take away from the win, and that's definitely a skill in itself, is taking advantage of opponent's mistake. But you have to question what would have happened if Aoyama didn't put himself off balance with that leg sweep. Now, that's not the only thing that happened in Colton Owaka's favor in this match. Colton Owaka was in, I would say he was in full control most of the fight. We can see right off of the Tachi Eye, he gets up and underneath the arms of Aoyama, which, like I mentioned, Aoyama usually goes for the stand-up slap-slap, but this time he goes for an actual charge headlong into Kotonowaka's into uh, quad boobs. But Kotonowaka, we saw this earlier in the tournament, he knows how to catch Itachi Eye. Back leg, really far back, nice and stable in the ground, no, no slippage, no Tetsuyoshi salt in the way. Left foot, it's a little wide. His stance is pretty wide here, and I guess it needs to be to catch such a wide man in Aoyama. But uh, he withstands the attack, and now this is where they start to get pushing at each other. So Colton Owaka finds himself in an unusual spot here. He, you can see this uh, left arm kind of up and back as he's shifting over towards the camera to the right. We can kind of see his feet want to move this way or at least that's what's being indicated he's turning his hips this way so it's i'm kind of questioning why he's gonna do that until we see the next part of the attack where he goes for the slap down 
He tried to slap down Aoyama, and it was a pretty subtle movement. We could see it ourselves that he was coming to the right, but uh, Aoyama doesn't get slapped down because he has a solid base in himself. But this, the follow-up right here, is really good from Colton Owaka. Follow-up, two hands inside to the chest. Even if he does give up an outside grip on the belt, he has both hands inside, right up here on the shoulders, on the collarbone of Aoyama, and moving up to the neck, full control. Just what can you do against being choked? Full control for Colton Owaka. And uh, ordinarily, I might call it a mistake to lose that grip on the neck, but he's pulling back that left hand to try to parry Aoyama's right. Because we can see Aoyama's right hand is low. He was probably trying to go for the belt. And Colton Owaka pulled back that left hand while maintaining the assault with the right to try to block or parry whatever Aoyama wanted to do with that right. So he's shutting down Aoyama's right hand, maintaining the attack. That's very good attack and defense at the same time. He does get turned a little bit here. Aoyama taking the step to the side. And now this is where usually an Oshizumo wrestler will start to struggle is when his attack gets knocked to the side. And we can see already Aoyama's hand coming up, going to slap the arm away. And he would want to come around and assault the side here. But what happens next is that uh, Aoyama's parry attempt really doesn't do anything. Colton Owaka actually pushes him back all the way to the edge, still has that hand to the neck. Like, that is incredibly powerful from Colton Owaka. Maintaining good footing. Now he has that right foot back again. That's what we like to see. He's maintaining good posture. Elbow in. So it won't get manipulated by an Aoyama who's trying to grab that elbow, push it in further. Well, that'll only generate more power going up. So, Aoyama in a very bad spot here. And even though, again, Aoyama going for the pull on the arm, he's not fast enough to take advantage of this specific situation. Aoyama simply cannot exert speed right here. So, Koto Nawaka in a bad position, but pivots on that foot again. Instead of trying to pull back... This foot to re-square, he pivots on it. Like we just saw, his toes were facing this way. Now they're facing this way. He pivots on it and just maintains solid stance. And now Aoyama trying to attack the throat, but Colton Owaka still has his own right hand inside. They're trying to, you know, parry each other's inside rights with their outside lefts by going for the elbows. But Aoyama takes the step back. Colton Owaka still on the assault right here, and it is annoying that this keeps artifacting like that. But uh, Colton Owaka still just exerting full control here, going for another good assault to the face. Aoyama, those arms are flailing. They're not touching anything right now. Trying to grab around the back of the head, and we can see this is where Aoyama is about to go for the leg sweep, because now they're going to go head to head. He does make contact with the leg, but this is where, like, Colton Owaka, I don't know if he saw this coming, but we can definitely see that he was completely unaffected by this because uh, we can see right here, Aoyama takes the step and he's already prepped for it. You can see he pulled back this leg because he knows he's gonna Aoyama's going to try to kick this, so he's going to step forward, let this get kicked up, and then use that momentum to just replant his foot. So that was one incredibly slow swift motion and i'm i wish i could go back just by like five or six frames but we'll have to go back five or six seconds if we want to see that again but that was really good from colton Owaka. one swift motion right here just really slow watch the feet because he's going to bring this foot forward at the same time this foot gets kicked and just re replant his feet bop Replants his feet in a very favorable position. Now Aoyama has put himself off balance because his hips are turned. His foot is up in the air and he has to plant this foot before he can move this one back to either recenter himself or restabilize his footing. And then Colton Owaka just takes advantage. Very, very well done. Every single step of the way by Colton Owaka in this match. And this truly 
is a fantastic match for Colton Owaka. This was outstanding for him. Getting his sixth win against Aoyama. And like I mentioned, full control the entire way. I don't think I ever doubted that he would uh, lose this match. I mean, live, maybe, because anything can really happen. But uh, just analyzing this one specifically, like, when you have hands to the throat, it's hard to lose. And then against someone as sluggish as Aoyama, you kind of have, you know, the advantage the entire way. And then, yep. And Colton Owaka saw that leg sweep coming, and he was prepared for it by the time it hit him. Really, really good sumo from Colton Owaka here on day eight. Day nine. Let's see who his opponent is. That is going to be Tochi Noshin. So he's fought a lot of veterans in the past uh, three days. Kaisei, Aoyama, Tochi Noshin. He's basically going through a gauntlet of all of the veterans. Those quotes uh, to those sumo wrestlers. Where is... Oh, wait. I started stream late. Okay, I thought I was looking at Judio guys because I just saw two and one, and I'm like, who are these people? All right. I started my stream late this day. There we go. All right. This is Aoyama versus Dayamami. Here we have Colton Owaka versus Tochi Noshin. So in the same fashion that uh, Colton Owaka lost to Kaisei in that straight-up chest-to-chest Yotsu battle, is Colton Owaka going to make the same mistake here, or is he confident enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tochi Noshin in his own style? We'll see what happens. So he does go straight for it, but Tochi Noshin is the one to pull back and try to go for some Oshizumo, which fails miserably, and Colton Owaka gets the win. So, another quick match here, which, uh, like I said, it's the onus here is on Tochi Noshin, because he's the one that pulls back to go for some thrusts, and, well, it simply does not work out. Tochi Noshin actually has that outside left that he likes to get, but we can already see that uh, Koton Owaka is moving his hip back. Like, we can see his hips are not usually the square they are. We can see his foot moving back, this one moving forward, and he knows that Tochi Noshin wants the outside left grip, and even though Tochi Noshin initially grabs it, he's moving this hip away and trying to make it so that, like, Tochi Noshin can't do anything because he's going to break it. And that's exactly what happens here, where Tochi Noshin breaks it himself. Like, Colton Owaka actually moves forward, which would have been favorable for Tochi Noshin because then he would have been able to lock it in even deeper. But Tochi Noshin pulls up and away to try to go for some manhandling to the face. So now, Tochi Noshin stepping back. He has some, a good stance for it, too, but Colton Owaka is the one with forward momentum right here, and Tochi Noshin kind of just gives up any little bit of pressure he might have had to try this attack that he is not known for, not usually his style. So Colton Owaka takes advantage of it and tries to match him. The hands here are a little strange because it's like... Again, Tochi Noshin is not known for his Oshizumo, so I don't think his attack here is very refined. So the response from Colton Owaka, like, he doesn't know. It's one of those things where, uh, you know, you don't fear the master swordsman. You fear the dude who just picked up a sword because he doesn't know what he's doing. Not to imply that Tochi Noshin doesn't know what he's doing, but uh, you can catch my drift here where uh, the defense looks odd because the offense is odd. Can't really like, Colton Owaka went for a push to the face there, which had little effect, so now he's going to try to parry. Like, he doesn't know if he wants to parry with this outside right, or if he wants to attack with it, because he doesn't know what Tochi Noshin is going to do. Tochi Noshin is going to throw this forearm left, which is going to allow Colton Owaka to get the attack up underneath the armpit, and then Tochi Noshin is going to pull back, attempt... A slap down for some reason, and really just kind of 
Like, I'm not I, I job still don't know what Tochi Noshin was going for here. So Kotonowaka, I mean, Kotonowaka. if we want to just look at it from his perspective, trying to pull away with that uh, that right hip very far away from Tochi Noshin. And then, oops. And then he pushes forward into Tochi Noshin. And Toji Noshin loses the grip, goes for manhandling, and Colton Owaka really, uh, it looked like he was slower in his attack. Because usually he's a little more crisp in it, but like, in this part of the attack, he, like I said, he doesn't know where he wants to put his hands because he doesn't know how Toji Noshin's going to try to attack. And you can see it because, like, his right hand here is kind of flailing about a bit until Toji Noshin hits his mark. And then Colton Owaka just knows how to take advantage of it. So, this is like the third match I would say Colton Owaka wins just from his opponent being stupid. And I mean, like I said, a win is a win. Seven wins for Colton Owaka. Could not tell you what to what was going through Tochi Noshin's mind in this match. And truthfully, Tochi Noshin just looked terrible right there. Coming into day 10, really setting these two trimesters in, we have uh, Colton Owaka versus Ishiuda, who also went on to get 11 wins. That's uh, a little later. Here we go. Colton Owaka versus Ishiuda. Kotonowaka would suffer his third loss here against the smaller, rougher, rough and tumble kind of strategy, Ishiuda. Really and uh, this is actually a matchup that Kotonowaka has never won. Ishiuda is 5 and 0 oh in the head to head. So let's see what, uh, why can't Kotonowaka beat Ishiuda? Ishida getting low but getting bounced back, trying to slap the hands away, pulling Colton Owaka away, trying to get up and underneath at every single opportunity, and he does. And now he has a lot of leverage underneath Colton Owaka. Colton Owaka trying to go for a throw, but gonna get blocked. Ishida, and this is where he's gonna go for the throw himself, if I remember correctly, and that's exactly what happens. So that was actually a pretty even match up until that point, even at full speed. And uh, I like to watch it again at full speed because, like, Ishiura is just really scrappy. And we can see that in how he attacks Colton Owaka here and how Colton Owaka tries to defend and attack. Like, Colton Owaka is the one on the push all of the time. Like, Ishiura is stepping back, stepping back. Colton Owaka is on the offense, but he can't really land the blows until he gets this outside right where he tries to go for the throw, but Ishiuda blocks that with his inside left leg. And then now that Ishiuda has the inside right, he goes for the throw because that's the favorable position for him, and he manages to take down Colton Owaka. So, just a little bit slower this time. Colton Owaka actually pops up Ishiuda, has hands to the chest, and really keeps Ishiuda away from the bell. Enho, take notes. Ishiuda trying to attack the belt so he can get a grip, but Colton Owaka just keeps pushing him away, like hand to the face like that. Ishiuda hopping backwards around the ring, giving uh, Colton Owaka a lot of space, like so much space that uh, Ishiuda actually almost pulled him out right there, but Colton Owaka plants this right foot really far forward, and then again, Ishiuda going for a pull, going for a slap down on that arm, and here we see, again, Colton Owaka pushing forward. He's going on the assault. Ishiura lowers his head to meet the hands of Colton Owaka. And he actually gets underneath the hands of Colton Owaka. Jumping backwards, getting low. Like, that's pretty risky sumo. And uh, that's something where Enho would have lost right there. But Ishiura gets underneath the hands of Colton Owaka. Colton Owaka missing the shoulders, which is, ex like, you can see... Colton Owaka has the left hand on the shoulder. The right hand slides off the back. So now this is where Ishiuda wants to be because now he can try to get inside and that's exactly what he does. Attacks, 
gets inside, inside left hand on the knot of the belt. And like I said earlier in the same video, that's where you want your hand to be. Because that's where you can exert the most control over your opponent. So now, Kotonowaka has to try to match the grip, gets the outside right, and uh, Ishiura really locking in that inside left shoulder up in the armpit. Kotonowaka is in a very bad position here, like definitely not favorable at all. So Ishiura just trying to keep Kotonowaka like that inside left away from the belt. And this is where Kotonowaka figures he needs to try to go for a throw here. And eventually we're going to see it. He goes for it. And let's see how he misses this, actually, because I think Ishiura put his left foot in, like, we're going to see Ishiura put his left foot in front of Kotonowaka's right foot to block the throw. You can see Kotonowaka turns, tries to throw, but Ishiura plants that foot inside. It was behind the foot back here, and then you can see him pull it back, and then bam, right here, blocks the throw from Kotonowaka. Kotonowaka doesn't know how to handle this. But Ishiura blocks the throw attempt, even though it is a very good attempt in for all intents and purposes from Kotonowaka. He just can't finish it because Ishiura grip on the back of the belt, helping him maintain balance. His outside foot, though, is really far away. Almost has this throw. Actually grabs the shin of Kotonowaka to maintain balance put his foot back down and now Kotonowaka has to stumble backwards to try to regain footing nearly falls here as uh, he continues to try to throw but Ishiura blocking with that inside left blocking this throw attempt and then from here Ishiura just gets the throw because he gets the inside left leg and throws Kotonowaka over his own so it's hard to say who was in control for most of this fight because Kotonowaka was on the attack while Ishiura was on the retreat, but that was all according to Ishiura's plan. On the retreat until Kotonowaka misses his attack and that one mistake is all Ishiura needed to get inside and then go for the kill shot later. And even then, Kotonowaka still had a good chance of getting the throw, but Ishiura's footing just too fast. And uh, I think this is just a, a lack of experience in this kind of situation for Kotonowaka. Because he, I think he wasn't wrong to keep pursuing the attack. It was just a matter of actually landing his hands where they needed to be. So he could get that frontal push out, that Oshidashi against Ishiura. But missing that right hand on the shoulder, letting Ishiura get a grip on the belt. From here, it's really difficult for Kotonowaka. And... That's seen by the fact that Ishiura is now 5-0 and o against Kotonowaka. Pretty well done match from both men, honestly. Like, that was an exciting match. As we move into day 11, we have Kotonowaka fighting against... Where are you? He's fighting higher up to Banzuke now. You will be fighting Takara Fuji, so he is. He's almost halfway into the night. Oh wow, look at that. I skipped right to it. Kotonowaka versus Takara Fuji. Kotonowaka will win this one via Oshidashi. And we know for a fact, like Kaese, like Tochinoshi, Takara Fuji is a very powerful Yotsuzumo specialist. What if you don't need to teach him new tricks? And this is another unfortunate tournament where Takara Fuji couldn't get 10 wins. And I would have loved to see it. Uh, unlucky. Takara Fuji versus Kotonowaka. Kotonowaka, you cannot let this man grab your belt because the likelihood of him winning goes up by like 90% if he grabs your belt. <laughs> so how does he react in this match? Well, he wins by Oshidashi, so I have to say uh, he probably kept him away from the belt. Yep, blocks with that inside right, pulls back, keeps on blocking, keeps Takara Fuji at an arm's length the entire way, and pushes him out of the ring. So, another short bout here, but a lot to break down. 
because a lot of it is in the small hands. Like the small movements of the hands. Kotonowaka usually brings down this right arm to grab the inside right. Or against Oshizumo, he'll have the elbow out like he does now. But this time he has the right elbow out because he wants to block Takata Fuji from going for this belt. He wants to block this. That's not going to happen. So he puts down the elbow and forces the forearm into the wrist of Takata Fuji. Oops. Into the wrist of Takata Fuji. To keep him away from the belt. And that's still what's going on right here. Takata Fuji trying to lock the uh, inside right. So he can still try to exert control. But Colton Owaka pulls back. Oops. He pulls back. And then pushes forward again. He pulls back here. Which makes Takata Fuji break the grip. And then using this right forearm. He creates the separation he needs. To keep Takata Fuji away from the belt. Hands to the chest. The entire way, Takara Fuji getting pushed up and back. So he's hopping up on these feet, loses his footing, but Jesus Christ, look at his quads. Look at this man's quads. Oh my God. Getting popped back up. He still has a solid footing, but we can see Colton Owaka, he's on the assault. That left foot is very far back. Right foot planted, pushing forward, bent knee. And he is putting left hand. Left hand to the chest, right hand coming down, still trying to block Takata Fuji's inside left. But Takata Fuji on the retreat, not much he can do from this position. And Takata Fuji, you can see he's swinging his arm down so he can try to grab the belt underneath. But Colton Owaka is going to keep pushing with this left hand to the chest and then just pop him out of the ring. Whoops. Takata Fuji gets him to turn a little bit but that's not enough and we can see even like this might actually affect a lot here because Colton Owaka leaps forward actually gets his left foot behind Takara Fuji's or left foot and this might contribute to the win too like a little bit of a trip because now Takara Fuji he can't put that foot down he was not allowed to put that foot down so now he's on one foot on the Tawada pushed out of the ring Colton Owaka with a really nice match there. And now it looks like he's really coming into his own. Like that first week, shaky. Three of those wins, mostly on the mistakes of his opponents. Now he's looking really solid. His match against Aoyama, really good. This match against Takara Fuji, really good. His loss against Ishiura, not bad. So now we move into day 12. Where his opponent is... Where are you? Konto Nawaka versus Sada no Umi. That's a little too far. Konto Nawaka, Sada no Umi. This is still a little too far. Here we go. Alright, so Sada no Umi. Long time veteran. Pretty good at Yotsu. Konto Nawaka. Younger man. Let's see how he does. Umi down and ready. Catches the Tachi eye from Sarana Umi. Gets the inside left on the belt. Outside right on that outer layer of the belt. But that's going to be enough. They're throwing each other at the edge. I think that's a throw initiated by Sarana Umi. But uh, Kotono Waka popped his uh, leg up. And I am uh, i don't remember if this is a Tori Naoshi or not. So I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, it's called for Kotono Waka. Yeah, this is a, I think this is another case of a mistake by his opponent, but, you know, good defense. Left elbow down and in to block the grip, and his right arm is actually the one out. So, this kind of tells me that he knows what the favored grip of his opponent is, and he adjusts his Tachi eye accordingly. Because he had the right hand inside against Takara Fuji, but now he has the left hand inside against Sada no Umi. So he's smart enough to know what his opponents like to do and is smart enough to know how to counter them. So left hand inside, breaking the grip from Sada no Umi, getting like, you can see him scoop up. Sada no Umi getting popped up with that uh, left arm underneath the armpit. 
And uh, right here, he does manage to get that outside right grip, but this only gives Colton Owaka that inside left. Outside right, like I mentioned before, for Colton Owaka is not as strong because uh, he doesn't have all layers of the belt like Sadano Umi has right now. But as we're going to see in a little bit, you know, going chest to chest, pushing, pushing, Colton Owaka actually takes the step back and then tosses Sadano Umi to try to get him off balance. And while he's doing that, Sarano Umi replants. He's trying to replant this foot, but he's getting hopped to the side. Colton Owaka, using the leverage he has on this outside right to really move Sarano Umi. So even though it's not the best ideal grip on the belt, it's enough of a grip that he's exerting good control. And then this is where Sarano Umi goes for the push and then attempts the throw. 90% sure Sarano Umi is the one attempting the throw here and you could see Colton Owaka lifts his leg up as if he's going for the kakenage except he missed the leg but uh, that's kind of a good strategy against what Sarano Umi was trying to do because Sar Sarano Umi would have wanted to kick up that leg to get momentum for himself but Colton Owaka taking that out of the equation before Sarano Umi can actually get that leg up there like he is now this puts Sarano Umi in kind of an awkward spot because now he's reaching his leg all the way. Like, instead of having both of his legs down so he can, like, at least try to push his hip into the other leg of uh, Colton Owaka, he pulls the leg up to try to get the leverage up here so he can tip the scale a little bit more. But this only puts him, like, this shoulder is further down. His head is further down. So... This uh, this recovery of the throw, not really working out for Sarano Umi here. And Totonawaka leaping up off the ground as well to make sure Sarano Umi hits the ground first. Overall, uh, pretty smart moves by Totonawaka. Definitely showing good defense here yet again. Good defense in the catch at the Tachi Eye. Good movement, good offense, just moving uh, Sarano Umi around the ring. And then recognizing right here to lift that leg so he can generate the pressure himself. Because we can see uh, that leg over here is on the Tawada. So he's pushing back a little, just enough, and pushing himself up and over onto Sarano Umi. We kind of, I kind of can't draw it out, but uh, you know, if we imagine like you know, how they're like this. Instead of like this, we can see Kotonowaka leaning on Sarano Umi. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's leaning on Sarano Umi, pulling up this leg 50-50 on whether or not that was the best decision to make. But when we see Sarano Umi try to kick his leg up there to try to get that pressure, like now that Kotonowaka has his leg out of that equation already, he's not going to get like windmill kicked like whoop. He's just a little bit more pushing pressure on that leg instead of a lot of pressure on that leg. So good move from Colton Owaka right there. Really just leaning down on Sarano Umi and then Sarano Umi falls to the ground. It's hard to see who yeah, Barry, you hear him opening a bag of chips? Are you going to go bother him for food like you do me? Overall, another really good win for Colton Owaka. Day 13, it's where he will fight against the very higher ranks. He's going to be fighting against Thomas Owashi. Owashi the alley cat. That is going to be in the second half of the night, it Train seems. Of thought completely left my versus Chio. What's up, babe? Yeah, They're not calling him Mono E either, so what the... Socks? Right, just one second. I gotta go get Princess some socks. Uh, I think the second one. But I think. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. All right. So. 
Tamawashi defeated the Yokozuna earlier in this tournament. Colton Owaka looking for his 10th win. Uh, gifting you a sub like 75,000 points or something. That one's through history. Tamawashi has a very good story. Has a very good balanced attack, I think. Colton Owaka is developing a more balanced attack. So definitely a good person to learn from. Should he have a good learning experience? Let's see how it goes. Colton Owaka, left hand inside, pushing forward, right hand to the throat. Tamawashi can't. Oh! But Tamawashi sidesteps him and throws him to the ground. Tamawashi. Colton Owaka will not join. The right. This is one where uh, his foot sweeps the outside. <laughs> and we didn't see it at full speed. Yeah. I remember this now. Tamawashi's foot slips outside of the ring and it's really hard to see full speed. Like, just watch uh, Tamawashi's feet here. I think actually my camera covers it. Nope, yep. You could see it. It's so fast. It's like the side of his foot steps outside the ring, but Colton Owaka gets the win. <laughs> so, this is like. This is win by the skin of his teeth territory. And. This is definitely mistake by his opponent. He has a very good attack, don't get me wrong, but uh, at the edge, you know, nine times out of ten, his opponent won't accidentally step out of bounds. This was just the uh, unlucky one for Tamawashi. Because we can see Koton Owaka inside left, Tamawashi going for the outside right, gonna not let Tamawashi get the grip, and so Tamawashi's gonna go on the retreat, which helps Koton Owaka, who's going to put his hand to the throat of Tamawashi, Right here, they're trying to go hand to throat, hand to throat. Colton Owaka has his hand up underneath the armpit. I think Tamawashi's doing the same on the other side, so they're going for the exact same attack here. And uh, this is where we see separation being created. But Colton Owaka keeping his hands on the chest. Tamawashi is doing that to, you know, when we cover Abi. I like talking about the swim move where he attacks and then pulls the arm back and attacks and then pulls the arm back and attacks. But Colton Owaka is keeping his hands to the chest. So when Tamawashi pulls back the arm, he's losing all of the leverage that he would have had if he had kept his hand up at the face because now Colton Owaka is pushing, pushing, and pulling this arm back. Now he's not going to have as much power because it's got a shorter distance to travel. So now Colton Owaka, really good push, gets a cheeky slap to the face. Hand to the throat now. Other hand up underneath the armpit. This is really good pushing power from Colton Owaka. Really gets a Tamawashi reeling. But Tamawashi's going to parry with his own outside left. Slap away the uh, inside right from Colton Owaka. And then at the edge over here, we see Colton Owaka leaps forward. You never want to leap forward with both of your feet. You always either want to do that shuffle shuffle that we saw from Mitakeyumi. Or you want to take just one step at a time. But I think uh, Colton Owaka getting a little overzealous here. Leaps forward, both of those feet, even if it's just a small amount of time. You know, it's still a little risky. But now he has that one foot back planted, left foot up in the air. Tamawashi, really wide stance up against the Tawada to try to defend. Colton Owaka's hand is throwing the forearm forward, but I don't know about having his hand down like this in the chest. You're not chopping the dude. It's not WWE. But uh, getting the forearm up to the throat, and this gives Tamawashi everything he needs for the sidestep pullout. Unfortunately for Tamawashi, he's going to step out, but right here, Colton Owaka really is in a bad position. He goes from decent position to bad position in a matter of seconds, because now Tamawashi generating force this way, pulling the forearm that way, and Colton Owaka has nowhere to go but out of the ring. And we can see, like, right here, he's leaning forward, He's dead to rights, but because Tamawashi... Ah, right there. Right there, Tamawashi stepped out. If Tamawashi doesn't step out right there, that's a Colton Owaka loss, and it is a very fair loss. Because he got overambitious, he overextended, and, you know, Tamawashi suffered the consequences of his actions. 
Up until that point, though, Colton Owaka had a really good attack. Like, we can see, he's pushing forward, Tamawashi trying to parry, trying to parry, but here is where he loses it. Because Colton Owaka has the elbow to the shoulder, forearm to the chest, Tamawashi pulling him out to the side, and I think if, uh, instead of going for the forearm, he went for, you know, a hand to the face then it would have been the frontal push-out clear as day. But because it's forearm to the neck, that gives Tamawashi, the more experienced man, the opportunity to see his out. This is a position he's probably been in a million times. So he sees his out. He knows forearm to the neck, push the forearm up and away, and then let him fall out of the ring. And that's exactly what happens. But uh, Tamawashi steps out of the ring first. But yeah, watching that live, it was like really odd because I had no idea that uh, Colton Owaka actually won that match until he got the money and I'm just like, what? <laughs> Up next is day 14 where we have Colton Owaka going head to head with, where is he? Just control F. Uh, he's going up against Taka No Show near the end of the night. And this is uh this was one of those early tests to see uh you know how because he's in the U Show race right now. He was eleven and three. He's tied with Teru Fuji, Abi, and one win behind Mitake Yumi, who goes to uh win this fight against Sakura Fuji. And here we have Colton Owaka, who is in the Yusho race. And uh, Takanosho, the Sekiwake, has to try to take him out of it because that is his duty. So Colton Owaka with his second real test of the tournament. Like, Tamawashi was a real test. And he got away with that win. Stole that win. Takanosho right here. Another real test. Takanosho, Oshizumo expert. Let's see how Colton Owaka tries to counter the attack. Yes, you're correct, Sven. Oh. Takanosho going straight for the face, but Colton Owaka stepping back, stepping back, pulling him down, and letting him tumble out of the ring. <laughs> Colton Owaka with some pretty good defense. Yes, parries the attacks from Takanosho and simply, you know, does what is very effective against someone pushing forward very hard in letting them fall flat on their face. So Colton Waka getting popped up at the Tachi Eye here. Takanosho has a good angle, but Colton Waka blocking with that inside left, the uh, or rather the inside right. Uh, Takanosho going straight for the throat, but we can see. Colton Owaka has hand up on the tricep here, so he's going to slap that to the side and then try to get to the side of Takanosho, but Takanosho is not Kaisei. He actually has a little bit of speed. So Takanosho recharges, gets the hand on the shoulder, gets a good push forward now, and keeps the hands on the body while Colton, Shoho, Colton Owaka tries to counter by getting hands to the face to stop the assault. He's keeping his feet square and he's, you know, taking one step at a time. He's not hopping back, get, keeping himself nice and balanced. But Takanosho still on the attack. Kozuna Waka attempts to do to Takanosho what uh, Tamawashi did to him yesterday by, you know, letting him fall out of the ring and going for the pull. But Takanosho stabilizes himself, gets low, nice knees bent, hips, you know, still moving forward. Koto Shoho still on the retreat. Recatches Takanosho, and this time he has hand on the butt, hand on the back of the head, and he's gonna slap him down, grab the belt, throw him to the edge, lift up that foot so he doesn't accidentally step out. And Colton Owaka gets the good win. So, this is a, a situation where he did well against the uh, good attack of Takanosho. I'm not gonna say Takanosho is the best. Oshizumo guy, like he's definitely top five, but uh, the real Oshizumo test comes against Abi, 
who Colton Iwaka has the next day. And I'm not saying that uh, Takanosho isn't Sekiwake material. I'm just saying he's not the best at, uh, you know, his style. And I think uh, Abi, even though he might not replace him this tournament, probably will the next. And, uh, you know, next tournament is going to be something to look forward to. You can catch all the action here on twitch.tv slash Leo Dickinson VT. Yeah, I mean, not too much else to say about that. Good defense from Colton Owaka. Just uh, letting the assault yes, you're play itself out while he parries and steps back and parries and then pulls out. Colton Owaka, Parry. Parry. Throw. Fast match. He nods to himself. He's pumped. He's happy. He's good. He's still in the U show race. And, uh, of course, coming into day 15, he fights against Abi. Gonna be near the end of the night, if I remember correctly. Uh, actually, it's not. In the second hour, though. Come on. Oh ho, Ichi Yamamoto. We're getting there. Oh, here we go. That was uh, Abi and Kotonawaka. After uh, Tobizaru. So the stakes were definitely high on this match. Whoever wins this has the chance at a playoff. Which we all know did not happen. Yes, we have a Colton Owaka versus Abi, which is a match that will be featured on my video on Tuesday, the top 10 videos of the Hatsubasho. Abi with some really good hands to the face, Colton Owaka matching, but Abi gets turned around. Colton Owaka on the assault again, but Abi re-attacking all the way from the Tawada. Colton Owaka can't seem to keep up with the assault, but does manage to turn Abi around while Abi gives him the sidestep and the slapdown. So a lot goes on in this match, and we can watch that live again. Like we can watch that full speed, because a lot happens in this match. Colton Owaka goes forward on the attack, parries the arms from Abi, but gets pulled, recovers, pulls Abi, who recovers, pushes forward against Abi, who recovers, pushes back, parries, parries again, and then pushes forward, slapped down. So a really fiery match, kind of chaotic, something that we haven't seen Colton Owaka really be a part of until this match, because Abi has a way of making a match look pretty chaotic. So right here, right off the Tachi eye, hands to the shoulders, we don't see Colton Owaka's, either of his hands inside, even though this is definitely a time he would want them inside to parry Abi's attack, and uh... Well, he does try to fight off the hands, but he misses. He goes hand, he tries to attack hand to the arm, but fires a little too high and doesn't even get Abi's face either. So that's a misfire of an attack. But Abi, because he's not pushing forward, he takes a step back and gets himself, you know, leaning forward. So at the very least, Colton Owaka has that going for him. He was able to withstand that initial assault and have Abi take a step back instead of stepping forward. And this is a match we're going to cover next week again when we cover Abi in his uh, 12 wins from Abi's perspective at the very least. So now we know Colton Owaka withstood the attack. It's just a matter until of time until he parries and then goes on his own attack, which he does manage to right here. He gets hand to the throat, but this is where uh, Abi goes for the pull down on the hands and Abi just not fast enough to really take advantage of this bad position that Colton Owaka is in. But Colton Owaka, we could see step, 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 pulls this right foot back. He's going to plant it and just in time for the attack of Abi, he's going to slide all the way to the Tawada. That right foot actually never got planted. It's still up in the air. He has, you know, no room to work with right now. He needs to plant that foot, which he does finally get down onto the Tawada. Abi's attack going really hard to the face, and he's really slow to try to parry these. He does have the left hand on the bicep, tricep 
of uh, Abby right here, which he does use to get himself an attempt at a slap down with a really nice sidestep. Like this is an incredible sidestep considering he was just inches away from losing a second ago. Really insane sidestep right there. And now, you know, he knows he doesn't have it yet. So he has to try to reset his feet and he immediately goes back on the charge. He doesn't give Abby an inch to breathe. You can already see he's going back on the charge. Hips square, arms forward. Thank you so much for the raid to Bison. We are currently breaking down Colton Awaka's final match of his uh, 15 days. I hope you had a great stream. But anyway, thank you again for the raid. But here we see uh, Colton Awaka is the one moving forward. Abi is the one that, ha that has the onus of uh, trying to parry these attacks now. But Colton Awaka... Going hand to the face, he's on the attack, he's pursuing, and uh, we've seen against Ishiura, he is not very good on the pursuit. So, Abi, able to parry the attack here, push Kotonowaka off to the side, Kotonowaka can't get the kill shot, takes the step back because Abi is pushing him back. So now, Kotonowaka, he either has to try to parry this attack coming at him, or try to mount an assault to try to push Abi up and out of the ring. But Abi, way too fast, way too strong, pushing Colton Awaka all the way back. He's getting, you know, good steps back to keep his stability. He's keeping his stability. He throws Abi to the side, and now Abi, one foot in the air, body contorted weirdly. This would be the time for Colton Awaka to attack, but he's still recovering. He's still trying to recover from that, you know, really rough attack. So... At the edge here, Abi with another really good charge. Kotonowaka, feet on the Tawada at the edge, gets another attempt at a slap out of the ring, but Abi withstands it. It might be not enough force, or it could be Abi knows how to counter that sidestep attack. So now we see these two staring each other down, eye to eye. You can see the electricity in the air. It's like a Pokemon battle, like staring each other down. And, uh, this is where, you know, they need to recharge each other right here. So Colton Awaka lets Abi charge him, catches Abi, and his hand not in the best position, going for hand around the back of the head. I would have preferred it if he tried to, like, put his hand up to the face to really stop the attack from Abi. But Abi goes down into the chest. Colton Awaka catches him, withstands the attack. And, uh... I think Colton Awaka, I mean, he's still in a decent position. His body is square. Abi is off to the side. I can't see where Colton Awaka's left hand is, but I have to assume it's underneath the armpit of uh, Abi here, underneath that right armpit, or either wrapping around the back, where when he does pull away, we see Abi trying to shake off that left arm. Now, Colton Awaka, I think he's getting a little sluggish here because this right arm just coming up to the shoulder, he immediately gets slapped back. Now Colton Awaka on this last assault here, trying to go for hands to the shoulders, which is definitely not a bad idea. And he does manage to get Abi in front of him, but then you can see it in his face. He's already, he's already dead. Whether it's something with his ankle, he slipped, or he feels the slap down on his wrists, he just goes right down. Bam. That was an incredibly exciting match. Like, oh my god. But that was... It was incredible how back and forth it is in such a small span of time. Like, watch it live again. This is Colton Awaka's most chaotic match. And defensively, he had some great recoveries. Offensively, he pursued really well. But this is just falling into Abby's chaos. He fell right into the black hole that is Abby's wild style of Oshizumo. Where he's constantly jumping around the ring rocking back and forth so it's really hard to mount an offense against someone who's really hard to hit and that's exactly why Colton Owaka couldn't finish him off he nearly gets the slap down after recovering really defensively here then it happens again goes on a good offense recovering defensively nearly gets another slap down like this was the most exciting match, but it's definitely not refined. Like, this is not incredibly ideal sumo. Back and forth, 
exciting, sure. Despite the loss, but Colton not the best. <laughs> not the best Oshizumo by a mile, but definitely a, like fun to watch. And that was uh, all 15 of Colton Owaka's matches. I do want to say that like overall, his more balanced style, you know, going back to what I said earlier, uh, if he faces uh, people better than him, he gets exposed slightly. Like, I think he should have been like maybe nine or eight wins, but uh, some of those wins he got were mistakes by his opponents that he took advantage of. The one mistake by Tamawashi, like, that's not something you can take advantage of. That's, like, more of a losing technique type thing. Even though he was getting pushed out, so it's not a losing technique. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. But, uh, I do think that, uh, Colton Owaka probably should have something closer to 10 wins at this tournament. Uh, maybe 9. Still a very good tournament, though, because this week 2 ramped it up. Fought against some powerful opponents. Very smart against Takara Fuji. Well done against Aoyama. Not wise against Kaisei. You know, but uh, for the most part, he showed really well done sumo. Well scouted sumo. Uh, not the most refined sumo. He's, you know, I think he's this, you know, really underdeveloped mass that can be refined. And we've seen that in his matches. And uh, we've seen that where uh, his defense is good. His offense is good, but he still has those moments where he gets taken advantage of, like in the Tamawashi fight, like in this Abi fight, like, uh, you know, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kaisei, not well done at all. Ishiuda, he, I mean, he just doesn't know how to deal with that Ishiuda. So he's smart, he is balanced, and he is young too. And that's one of the more important things. He is young, so he has a lot of time to refine his style. Like, he's 24 years old, and he's getting special prizes this young. He is looking good, and I really hope the next time he goes up into the Sanyaku, or rather up into the uh, Joy of Makuchi, he doesn't get smacked down. Because, uh, I mean, he was at Maegashita 8 at one point, and he went 6 and 9. And we can even go back that far to see who he was fighting and, you know, what his record was. And we can see even back then, like, he lost to Kageyaki, lost to, you know, a better Tochi Noshin, lost to Tobizaru, lost to Hoshoryu, lost to Tamawashi, lost to Endo, Ichinojo, Ryuden, and then Dayamami. Like, what happened there? But, uh, he was still... Like, molding himself then. And then later that same year, he goes up to Maegashita 3 after the 12 and 3, his f first Kanto show in uh, July. After that, of course, he bows out of the tournament due to injury, but we can see he's losing against better sumo wrestlers, and he's beating worse sumo wrestlers. So I feel like right now he's going to find himself in like that Tobizaru-esque position where he'll sit comfortably in middle Maegashita ranks and will need more time to develop. Because we've seen it. He has really good sumo. He has good enough sumo that, you know, he can beat a lot of these lower guys. But even then, he still makes some mistakes. He still has to wait for his opponent to make a mistake to take advantage of, which that's not bad. But I'd rather see him dominate than have him struggle and then Umaiwa flip the table. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather see Terno Fuji fucking Yorikiri every single match than I would want to see, you know, like, back and forth, who's going to win coin flip every single time. And uh, he can get there. He's, like, most of his wins this tournament, I want to say, like, six wins this tournament were very solid and decidedly in his favor. Three of them, like I said, taking advantage of an opponent's mistake. And then that Tamawashi win was like, he doesn't deserve that win. Let's be real. <laughs> he had a good offense in that match, but Tamawashi had better defense at the edge and it was just an unfortunate step out. So I'd like to see him uh, get better. Thank you for the follow, uh, Crazy Hunter. I'd like to see him get a little bit better. Still, you know, refining himself in these top divisions. 
And overall, I think he does have a very bright future ahead of him. And that is going to be it for this stream. If you are watching on YouTube, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you agree with my assessments or not. If you're here watching on Twitch, then shut the hell up. I don't need your opinions. But I would appreciate it if you can all watch Sumo Sundays every Sunday at a roughly uh, 10, 1030 because, uh, you know, we like to do sumos on Sundays because it's alliterative. I will also be covering the entirety of the next sumo tournament in March here on my channel where I will be featuring new and improved graphics like that. Because I think it's cool and immersive and would uh, really make the stream pop in terms of uh, production value. So I hope you all can tune into that. If you like Sumo, tell your friends to uh, like and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to follow my other YouTube channels as well, which you can find in the description below. Or uh, if you click on my channel name, it should be the first thing to pop up. So thank you again, everyone, for watching. That is going to be the end of the recording.